Well, good day, everybody, and welcome back. Typewriter spools. Well, a lot of us buy typewriter spools online. Maybe Amazon, Ribbons Unlimited, or whatever your favorite supplier of ribbons is. But you know, you pay more per ribbon if you buy it in spool sizes, and you can pay a lot less for your ribbons if you buy it in bulk. And there are several bulk suppliers of ribbons in the United States. One of those is Baco Ribbon and Supply. And I recently bought a 330-yard nylon red-black fresh spool of ribbon to supply the one I've been using and is almost running out. So I needed a spare spool to keep supplying myself with ribbons because when you have a collection of typewriters, of course, you're going to want to supply them with ribbons. I like the Baco ribbons because she inks them rather darkly. They're nice and wetly inked and that works fine with a lot of typewriters. Myself and my friend Kevin Kittle, we started this Albuquerque Typewriter Society a few years ago, and it's been struggling and growing a little bit. And with the inclusion of our new member, Was Flint, she is now our communications director. We have a nicer website and more polished communications out to our group. But one of the things that we do during type ins, public typewriter events, is we kind of prepare ourselves in the eventuality that somebody brings in their own typewriter and maybe the ribbon is really poor shape, really needs to be replaced. Well, my friend Kevin has taken it upon himself to help out with replacing ribbons, and we sometimes use the bulk supply of ribbons here. Well, Kevin is in the process of moving, and he's busy right now and can't really help us much this year with our type ends, and so I'm trying to get a new core group of people locally here in our society who can help out during type ins to do things like just replace ribbons for people. We're not repairing typewriters in the type ins. We will refer them to John Lewis or whoever is skilled at that. But as far as just replacing ribbons, we want to be prepared for that. But a lot of our new members are not as adept at replacing ribbons as some of us more experienced veterans are. So I'm holding a private workshop for our group next week and I wanted to be able to set up two different ribbon replacement stations so they can train themselves on how to do it. So before I show you that, let me show you how I've been dealing with the Baco ribbons and how I've been dispensing them onto individual spools. So I had made a version of this a few years ago, but my friend Bob Marshall of Typewriter Muse out in Riverside, California, had sent me his version of it. He calls it a speedy spooler. And what it is is a threaded shaft with some rubber material on one end so you can chuck it into a drill chuck. And there are some nuts and several different kinds of washers and then a wing nut on the top. And this enables you to adapt this to a wide variety of ribbon spools. So I will take off the wing nut and then I will separate out the washer and I'm going to put the ribbon spool there and the rubber one there. You can do this in a lot of different configurations or different kinds of spools. This conical shaped rubber, by the way, you can put that on the uh, recessed end of an Olivetti spool. So when you tighten down the thumb screw now, the spool is firmly fixed to the shaft. And that means you, now you can put it into a drill chuck like that, tighten it down. And then I'm using a battery powered skill electric screwdriver that has a hex opening on the end and it uh, fits the hexagonal quarter inch drill chuck adapters. And now you can turn the spool in either direction. So then, in my spare parts bin, I found this plumbing adapter. And this is how I usually build things, by the way, is I find something in my spare parts bin. And it fits snugly in the cardboard core of the Baco ribbon spool. And so I made this little wooden base with some feet and a plastic disc with four bolts protruding that are in a pattern that they will hold this plumbing adapter just right. And then the Baco spool goes right on this platter like that. And I've been using it 
in a horizontal fashion. This sits on a table, this will spin, and then I'll hold the drill next to it, and I will spin the drill and feed the ribbon from the bulk spool to the ribbon spool, applying a little bit of back tension to the bulk reel so that it will uh, stay tight. You'll have a little bit of tension on the ribbon and it'll wind up tighter. I saw online the other day uh, Lucas Duell from Chicago Typewriter posted a video where he built a ribbon dispensing station where, that holds the reel of ribbon in a vertical fashion. And he was actually using erector set parts, which is a kind of like a Meccano, uh, but it, an American version of a Meccano construction set for kids. He used a erector set to build this vertical system. And what he was using was a electric motor off of an old 6 Series Smith Corona and he was running a rubber roller on that and all he has to do is touch the rubber roller to the rim of the typewriter spool and it would turn it. So this was my old way of spinning the uh, typewriter spools with a drill like that chucked onto it with a speedy spooler but my new system it's going to be more like what Lucas was doing but Instead of having a dedicated motor, I am going to be using a portable battery-powered screwdriver. So I like this idea of using a rubber roller that spins, turned by a motor, and you can run it up against the rim of a typewriter spool. So I found one of these uh, sanding drum kits at the hardware store. It uses these cylindrical sandpaper tubes, and you put them onto this mandrel that has a rubber sleeve and so if you chuck it into your drill chuck like that now you have a roller that I can ride along the edge of a typewriter spool and use it to drive the spools and I'm going to try using the vertical system that Lucas Dole was using in his system suspending the ribbon spool vertically and um, of course the way I build these kinds of things is I usually find something in my hardware spare parts bin here in the shop and uh, it turns out I had some angle brackets, some bookshelf brackets. I have three of them and I'm, I'm using two of them at a time. So there's a short end and a long end. So let's see, short end on the bottom like that. So these are going to be bolted down to a base. I'll run a machine screw through there and it will support the ribbon spool, either the fresh one or the old one. So here's the hole where the bolt's going to go through and it's going to be supported right at the top of the center hub. You can see right up here. And so the shelf bracket had to be long enough so that from that position the spool won't rub on the base and it doesn't. So there's plenty of room. This looks like the right size shelf bracket. And by the way, since I'm making two of these stations, I needed four of these brackets and I could only find three of them in my hardware bins and I was scratching my head thinking what the heck did I do with that fourth bracket and then I finally look up here and I was using it screwed to the side of my loft to hang something off of so I said oh, okay so yeah we have four of them now I did have to slightly drill the hole out because we're using these 10 24 bolts and wing nuts to run through there and you can quickly put on a wing nut and hold the spool of ribbon in place. So let's show you the whole setup that I'm building and it's not quite put together yet. Some paint is drying on the wooden framework, the base of this. Let's take a look at it.
So for most uh, typewriter spools, I'll be using this rubber drive roller system for driving the reels. But if I'm winding up a ribbon for a Remington style spool, all you have is the metal ring in the middle. And so I'll be using a speedy spooler type of setup for a Remington spool. And we'll have this on hand in case we have to do that. Well, I'm surprised, but it looks like it actually works. So I'm going to put together the second unit and we'll have them both ready for our workshop this coming Sunday. So as I was uh, reviewing the footage of me testing how the whole system worked with a reel of ribbon on it, I noticed that because the mounting bolt was sitting in the top of the hole, the center hole of the Baco reel, it was rotating, the reel's rotating eccentrically, and it caused kind of a jerking motion to the winding on. So I decided, hey, I have a 3D printer, let's 3D print some little center hubs for these uh, spools so I can just stick them on there and it'll spin closer to the middle of the reel and be a little bit smoother. Okay, so the center hole of the Bago ribbon spool is 38.7 millimeters, and that's what I printed the diameter of these little inserts at. Uh, it has a uh, six millimeter hole for the bolt, and these four little holes in the sides of it are just to make it print quicker. It doesn't need to be solid. And so it's only five millimeters thick, so it needs to be closer to a half inch, and so I just printed two of them. And it's easier, it's actually quicker printing them as separate pieces. So each one goes in the side like that, and then you can put it like that, and it will turn nice and even like on the bracket here. Like that, it turns quite nicely, and it should work great for dispensing ribbon onto individual ribbon spools. It was a good opportunity to make up two of these. I mean, it took about the same amount of labor making two as it made one. And I don't really need two of these ribbon dispensing stations, but the fact of the matter is I have this training seminar coming up this weekend and I needed at least two of these so I could handle all the students, teaching them how to make up ribbons from bulk supply, how to crimp eyelets, etc. So I needed more than one of these stations. In any event, I hope this was helpful to you. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. And bye-bye for now.